So, okay. So we now know how to use AI to build your training materials, to train your team. So just to summarize, use Tango AI to just capture the screenshots and turn them into a step-by-step -step documentation of your process. Uh, if you want to go a step further, you can use, you can create a custom GPT and you create that with your subscription. Alternatively, you can just use Searchy to do a screen recording and upload mm -hmm. your screen recording and then have Searchy provide all the content as information through their AI capability. So th that way you don't have to do anything. You just need to build a Searchy portal for yourself and mm -hmm. then, you know, make it password protected, then off you go. So that's your company portal. And then you have your onboarding area. So those are all options. And then uh, definitely is a good tool. And uh, so now there's no excuse, right? So no, do go. it. Yeah, do exactly. Uh, just like uh, Nike says, just do it. So That's it. Enough, enough talks. Okay, so the next thing that I want to cover is so I like the customer service, dealing with mm -hmm. customer service, mm -hmm. uh, but also for our listeners uh, and viewers, I want to also say after customer service, I'd like to also talk a little bit about making sense of the reporting, all the data, mm -hmm. and how, how, what is the best way. So let's cover both for the time we have left. All right. Okay. So let's start with customer service. So Reality with customer services, it really depends on obviously your situation. If you have a D2C site, you can, for example, build your own custom chatbot that sits on your website, takes on some of the sort of customer queries that can be built on a model like GPT-4 that is very intelligent, very well-trained, et cetera. But this is not like, let's let's presume that this is not most of the most of the people like listening. We're talking specifically about you have somebody who responds to uh, customer queries within the Amazon environment. And for for this, like, of course, not like part of this process can be automated and you can use tools like also Zapier Make to automate some of this. But what I want to really focus on is around what are you responding to the customer? The first use case of AI within this context is very much around understanding and cataloging everything that you have ever received from customers and actually everything that is ever been a negative review. A lot of people talk about this when we talk about building a customer persona and optimizing your listings. And I think this is this absolutely applies when it comes to dealing with customer response. So one thing that I would really like to emphasize is that sellers really need to dig deep and like create it for themselves, a database of all of the possible customer pains, disgruntlements, anything, and from then learn and build like scenarios based on these. So how do you do that? Like obviously you would have all of the previous like customer complaints that you have. This is a really like valuable data. Combine that with any sort of negative reviews that you have, or if you don't have that many, like even combine them with the negative reviews from your competitors, because likelihood is if you have very similar product, like the, some of these, like the satisfactory, like unhappiness things will appear at one point in your reviews or within your customer complaints. And then again, I would go by and use Claude again. So Claude, the really interesting thing about Claude is that it has a very large context window. Um, now, ChatGPT has a large context window now with the latest version, which is 4.0. It has, I think, 128,000 tokens, which basically means that you can still feed it a lot of data. But I have extensively tested Claude with really large data sets of, of reviews and sort of text-based data. And Claude is superior in terms of understanding the semantics of what I'm feeding it. So ChatGPT is very good. Like when I feed it with a lot of data, it, it kind of counts instances 
The difference is that Claude, instead of counting instances of something being mentioned, understand the semantics and understand synonyms. So if something has been mentioned in two different ways, it counts it as one. And that is actually really valuable data. So the first thing you can do is understand what do customers struggle with the most when it comes to your product. And then when you take that data, you can then translate that into like perfect right tone of voice responses that your team can adapt only slightly, but it essentially have this database. I'm gonna shut up in a second. I know I have been having a monologue, Nick, but the final step I would say is then, once you have that database of all of the possible peeves and the way to respond it, again, go and build yourself a custom GPT. That again is based off rules and like, if this, then give me this, right? And then your customer team only has to really um, look at, okay, what is the problem? And then the custom GPT already spits out a ready, pretty much ready email response, which they can again amend in chat GPT, but like it's pretty like super optimized flow. And then you can do Zapier and all the other stuff, but this is kind of the, the foundation. Okay. So as far as the persona that you create out of the responses, that persona is for your team members or is it for the, the custom GPT to use? For both. So like, you know, the, the, the reality is that you need it for both. The, the first instance for your team members, well, you, your, whoever is talking to the customers, they need to understand who that customer is. And that like, cannot be automated. You need to have people who are understanding that they have to talk to people. And the only way to understand that is to understand who is that person opposite you, right? The second reason why you have to have your team to understand who the customer is, is because most of the time it's that person who would have to understand whether the tone of voice of what you're sending back is the correct one. And then you obviously need to feed that into the custom GPT because the custom GPT will take that persona and is going to be able to like then tailor the messaging correctly. But you can't have an automated process without having a human in the loop who is able to check, okay, is this correct? Like, does this make sense? Because sometimes like any AI can just give you crap. And if you don't know it's crap, you're just going to post crap. And you don't want that. You want to have a thinking human who is able to like understand, okay, this is the this is the problem. This is who I'm speaking with. My custom GPT is giving me this response. Okay, that sounds right. This is the right way to talk to that customer. Send or no, that's not right. I need to work with the G GPT to like come up with something else, or I need to like create a, a sort of a different a different response. So when you say tone of voice, are you talking about actual voice or are you talking about just the style in writing? When I talk about tone of voice, I'm talking about like how the email, for example, is written. Like, you know, okay. if you're talking okay. to... It's not like, voice. Not yet. Not yet. This is coming, but not yet. Okay. 